Let's take a look at Joe Biden's easiest path to victory in 2024. We'll start by giving him the states he's sure to win. Washington, Oregon, California, Hawaii, Illinois, New York, Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and D.C. So Joe Biden is starting with a baseline of 180 electoral votes of the 270 he needs to win, and I think there are a lot of states he'll very likely win. I think we can pretty safely say that Joe Biden will win New Mexico. He won it by 10 in 2020, and Democrats have won New Mexico by comfortable margins since 2008. Virginia is another state that Biden won by 10 in 2020. Recent polling shows him with leads of 3 and 16, so maybe there's a little glimmer of hope for the GOP here, but I don't really think so unless Glenn Youngkin somehow winds up the GOP nominee. Colorado also feels pretty safe for Joe Biden. He won the state by 13.5 points in 2020, and he's already up by 10 in the polls. There was a recent story in Politico about how the Colorado GOP is facing eviction from their office because they can't pay rent. They're in a bit of trouble right now. We're going to give Joe Biden Colorado. Biden also won Minnesota by 9 in 2020, and it's a state Democrats have won in every presidential election since 1976. It has been close at times, notably Clinton's 1.5% victory in 2016 and Gore's 2.5% victory in 2000. Joe Biden also carried Maine by 9 points in 2020, and he won the 1st Congressional District by 23%. I'm going to leave Congressional District 2 blank for now, as Trump won it in 2016 and 2020. And though it has been a swing state in the past, Joe Biden should win New Hampshire once again. He won it by more than 7 in 2020, and recent polls show him with leads of 12 and 9 points. Biden is now at 225 electoral votes, with a lot of states left on the map that he won in 2020. Let's quickly rule out the states he will definitely lose in 2024. Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, both Dakotas. Nebraska, but we will leave 2nd Congressional District blank for now, as he did carry it in 2020. Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, South Carolina, Indiana, and West Virginia. Biden also lost Iowa and Alaska by 8 and 10 points respectively in 2020. I don't see either flipping in 2024, and they would definitely not be a part of Biden's easiest path to 270. Biden also lost Ohio by 8 in 2020. It really doesn't seem like much of a swing state anymore, and Biden is already down by 8 in the polls. Our GOP nominee is now up to 148 electoral votes, and looking at what's left on the map, I'm not sure any of these states will be decided by more than 5% in 2024. Florida is a state that has been trending right as evidenced by the GOP's dominant victories throughout the state in 2022. Recent polling shows Biden trailing both Trump and DeSantis by double digits, and I just don't think flipping Florida would be as easy as winning some of the states that he actually won in 2020. Current polling in Texas is shockingly close at the moment, and Democrats have really narrowed down the margin in the state. Trump only carried Texas by about 5.5% in 2020, and if he's the GOP nominee again in 2024, expect a close margin. Maybe a different Republican would perform better prior to Trump. Republicans were winning Texas by double digits. I don't think there'll be that big of a margin in 2024, but I don't expect Biden to flip it just yet. With seven states and a congressional district left the map, we need to find 45 electoral votes for Joe Biden. Interestingly, if he only picked up Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, he'd land right at 269, and just imagine the chaos that would ensue if Joe Biden and Donald Trump tied in the Electoral College. And this is where Nebraska's second congressional district could play a huge role in 2024. Biden won CD2 by 6.5% in 2020, the best a Democrat has ever done since the state began awarding two at-large delegates and one to the winner of each congressional district. Democrats have been targeting this district for years because it encompasses the core of the Omaha Council Bluffs metro area. It includes Douglas County, home to Omaha, the largest city in Nebraska. However, in 2022, Nebraska did redraw its maps, and it may make Congressional District 2 a little more favorable to the GOP. The other Congressional District left on the map right now is Maine's 2nd Congressional District. Trump won CD2 by 11 in 2016, and more than 7 in 2020. In my view, Joe Biden is a lot more likely to win the 2nd Congressional District in Nebraska than he is in Maine, so let's give it to the GOP. We also know the Biden campaign is actively looking to flip North Carolina. And while I think North Carolina could flip in 2024, I don't see it as Biden's easiest path to victory. The GOP has carried North Carolina in every presidential election since 1980, with the exception of 2008 when Obama won the state by 0.3%. And since 2008, North Carolina has really become a battleground state with a margin of less than 4% in each election. 
It nearly flipped again in 2020, Biden lost by only 1.3%. If he's able to drive large turnout among young voters in the college towns, I think it could flip again. But for now, I'm going to lean it towards the GOP. From here, I see two pretty equal paths to victory for Joe Biden. One is one that we just talked about, winning Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Nebraska's second congressional district once again. We've seen Democrats pull off some big wins in Wisconsin recently, and Mandela Barnes nearly defeated Ron Johnson in 2022. We know the Michigan GOP is broke, and that Democrats have carried the state in every presidential election since 1992, with the exception of Clinton's narrow defeat in 2016. And if Biden can do as well as he did in the Pennsylvania suburbs in 2020, he should be able to pull out another narrow victory, especially if the nominee is Donald Trump. But there is an alternative path for Joe Biden to reach 270 in 2024. Biden would hit 270 if he won Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Arizona once again. Biden narrowly won Arizona in 2020, and the demographics of the state are going to continue to get more favorable for the Democratic Party. Arizona Democrats secured big victories in 2022, and I think they'll be well organized in 2024 with the three-way Senate race between Ruben Gallego, Kirsten Sinema, and whoever the GOP nominates. Right now, Carrie Lake is the frontrunner according to the polls, and she'll be announcing her campaign in October. And another thing to keep an eye on in Arizona is a potential ballot measure that would challenge the state's current 15-week ban on abortion. We've seen Democratic voters be very energized when abortion issues are on the ballot. Now, if Biden loses Pennsylvania and current polling does show him down by one, things get a little bit more tricky. He wouldn't get to 270 even if he managed to win Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, and Nevada, and Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District. Nevada is a state that voted more conservative than the national average in 2020, and they elected a Republican governor in 2022. If this ends up being the map, all eyes would once again be on Georgia. Biden won the state by a quarter of a percent in 2020, the first Democrat to do so since Bill Clinton. Recent polling has this race as a coin flip. In 2020, Georgia had the largest leftward shift in any state that Trump won in 2016, so can the GOP flip it back? We know Republican Governor Brian Kemp is extremely popular in Georgia, and the state is a new voting law that makes absentee voting a bit more difficult. At the end of the day, I think Joe Biden is more likely to win states like Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Arizona than he is Georgia, which is why I don't think it's part of his easiest path to victory in 2024. However, if Biden fails to win Pennsylvania, he'll need to either win Georgia or North Carolina to win the presidency. What do you think is Joe Biden's easiest path to victory in 2024? Let me know in the comments section below, then check out my next video to learn about Donald Trump's easiest path to victory in 2024.